How many times did you come across a really cool portfolio but couldn't quite figure out why you liked it so much and why you can't achieve a similar result? I'm not gonna lie, I've got a secret list with all my favorite portfolios that I sometimes use as a source of inspiration for my own one. If you do the same, well, keep watching because today you will find out how to determine if a portfolio is done well or not so well. So today I'm gonna walk you through five design portfolios built in Webflow that you, my friend, have submitted on Twitter. Three of them need a little bit of improvement and two of them are, in my opinion, doing an excellent job. So let's jump right in. Hi design friend, my name is Sara, welcome back to a new video and today I want to address a question that I get a lot on DMs which is how to structure a good portfolio to get hired. Now I want to say before going into this that I don't believe it's always black or white, good or bad and here is how I want to address this. Well, the truth is, I think there are some elements of a portfolio that can be improved without having to redesign the whole thing. And my intention with this video is not to be disrespectful with you, with your work, but simply to give you some guidance. And my last note before we begin is every portfolio is designed with a specific goal in mind. Your portfolio's goal might be different from those um, you are about to see, so please don't compare your work with them. Okay, let's get on with the first thing to avoid. We're now reviewing Uche's portfolio. He's a product design intern at Facebook. Although I really like what I see, it looks uh, professional and polished. I struggle a bit to read uh, some of the words, uh, like this one here. I recognize this font, by the way. This is the Grayscale from my friend Charlie. She's on YouTube. You've probably seen her channel. Anyways, looking through this plugin, I can see that some elements are not accessible, but this plugin is not even accurate. Like, as you can see here, this is not even the right color, okay? And that's because text gradients are essentially blocks of colors applied to the text. At least, this is how it works in Webflow. So, a few things you can do here. One is to use uh, text gradients as little as possible, two is to use them for big headlines uh, or titles, and three is to avoid using colors that are too bright, um, too light, or in essence not accessible. Maybe we can talk uh, more in depth about uh, accessibility in another video, but for now just remember to prioritize accessibility over the look and feel of your portfolio. The second thing to fix is uh, initially I'm dropping into the project page, but uh, I don't see any projects unless uh, you know like I scroll down a bit so we're looking at the hierarchy and the information architecture now I do love this image though but uh, your case studies are more important so this image can be moved like you know like at the bottom of the page another thing I find confusing is uh, when I click on projects uh, nothing changes because uh, you know we are already on the projects page okay but it doesn't reflect the URL you know, it should be like dash projects. So in practice, what I will do is I will probably duplicate this page and remove everything but the case studies and call it projects, which goes here. And this way, when you click on the link, you will see the case studies right at the top. Uche, you have really nice case studies, so make them the focus of your portfolio, okay? But now let's get on with the next one. So this is the website of Emma and this is what I see when I land on it. There are not many elements, so let me scroll down to see what else we've got on this page. The style is really nice with these lines. Nonetheless, she is a visual designer. So I start clicking on these buttons, but nothing happens. It looks like uh, the image and the URL are changing, but uh, the rest of the page uh, remains the same. When I double click though, I'm taken to the next section. So I realize, hang on, I'm on a different page, okay? So we can see here how the UX of the page can be a little bit uh, confusing. So now there are a few ways Emma can tackle this problem depending on what she wants to achieve. 
One way is to have a different headline for each page, you know, like one for marketing, uh, for uh, websites and one for everything so that you can differentiate these pages. The second one is to create a filter bar to replace uh, these buttons. By the way, it's pretty straightforward in Webflow, but if you do so, you should also, maybe you can uh, remove this picture and make the headline uh, wider so that you can see these blocks at the top. Now, let me show you what I mean. Here you go, so these are just a couple of ways uh, to improve the UX of this page. And now I want to contrast this uh, with a website that uh, really made me smile, I think it's doing fantastic work, uh, and this is uh, Kim's uh, website. I think it's so great uh, for many reasons. Let's take a look. Now let's just focus on the case study this time. I'm not gonna scroll down because it's a really long page, but I do appreciate uh, this little button here that takes me right to the top. And uh, as you can see, she is very detailed. She tells us uh, the unique story of her project uh, and takes us through the entire design process uh, from uh, research to final prototypes. So the reason I selected this portfolio is uh, I've been mentoring uh, quite a lot of junior designers uh, this year. I know the challenges of working on a personal project, so yeah, I thought it would be a good idea to show you that you don't need to wait until you become a senior designer to create a wonderful portfolio. So yeah, I really hope um, this is helpful. But now let's check it out. This top section is giving me a little overview of the project and just below I see the final design. I presume these are three of the most important screens. Here I can have a better understanding of what problem or problems we are trying to solve and this is, I believe, this is the final solution in Figma. I read the whole thing when I was preparing this video. It took me quite a while, I'm not gonna lie, but I thought it was very interesting. But for now, let's just skip to the final section. And this section is really important because especially when working on personal projects, the impact you make is not on the company or the product, but it's on yourself. In other words, the purpose of the project is more for you to practice and level up your skills other than helping the company succeed. So I highly recommend you talk about what you've learned, what you will do different next time, and maybe how you handle the design handover process with the engineers. One thing I want to point out though is that it's very lengthy. I think it's more suited for an already interested recruiter who wants to learn in details about um, Kim's uh, process and strategy. This makes sense for uh, an established designer, but um, if you're new to UX or product design, I would suggest you keep your case studies short uh, so that the recruiter can learn about your projects in less than, let's say, five minutes. But now let's move on to the next one. Last, I want to show you a very different but yet exciting portfolio from Alic. I chose this one in particular because I wanted to show you how to make a portfolio when your work can't be shared. You know, maybe you have many confidential projects where uh, you've signed a non-disclosure agreement or they haven't been uh, published yet. So all these things combined shouldn't hold you back from sharing your work, uh, get noticed by other companies and maybe get hired as well. But now let's take a look at this Webflow creation. Alic tells us that uh, since he specialized in enterprise design, most of his work uh, cannot be published online and therefore it's password protected. Let's scroll down so that you can see the page. So first impression, this is really high quality portfolio. The hero section captures the most important information and I think this helps build a trust in relation to the people that might end up hiring you. This section here is giving us an overview of his skills. I think it's a good shout to keep the list short because, you know, it's easier to read and remember. Even though these projects are password protected, you can still have a feeling of, you know, their look and feel. 
I'm not a big fan of horizontal scrolling though I think it's quite clunky and hard to use but uh, this is more of a personal preference I suppose from this page we can learn about uh, Alex process the type of work he does um, there are some cool articles here as well all good stuff so these are all unconventional ways uh, to create an excellent portfolio without having to show off your work and with that said, let's get to the last part. To quickly recap what we've learned today. First, we've learned the importance of accessibility. If your portfolio is user-friendly and accessible, it will give the viewer a good impression of your skills, even before they look at your case studies. Second, we've learned why it's important that you put the most important information at the top. So always look at ways to improve the hierarchy of your nav, your footer, and your case study as well and last but not least we've learned how to create a super awesome portfolio without showing off your case studies to the public and that was it i really hope you can take away some advice that you can use in your own portfolio but now let me know in the description what you like or don't like about this website i'd love to hear your thoughts on it as well all right thank you for watching have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time ciao